how do we ensure that we have suitable contrast when we're coloring? Because coloring in and of itself can be rather deceptive. Colors can look good to your eyes as you see them, but for someone who may suffer from partial color blindness or full on color blindness, may not be able to see what you're looking at. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you a technique that allows you to quickly check to see what your images look like in grayscale to determine whether there's enough contrast or not. So uh, I'm looking at the coyote that I've colored in the previous example here. And what I'm gonna show you is that if I now convert this to grayscale, you can see that there are dark, medium, and light values of this character represented. When we have a range of values like that from white to light gray, to medium gray, to dark gray, to black, that means that we have a wide value range. We have light to dark. This is an example that shows a wide value range. We can see all of those colors represented. Um, if I were to make some subtle tweaks, let's just go back here and um, let's adjust this down a, a scooch. like so. Look at the muzzle and look at the character. Now the muzzle and the other parts of the character look very similar. So each color resolves to a grayscale value. So in this case it looks like for the most part that the character is all one uniform color except for the eyes and except for the ears. So this is a consideration we have to keep in mind. We need to modify this to give it more contrast. And the way we can do that is we can make this lighter and we can make it more saturated. And now we can see that there's a value difference between the muzzle and the top part of his head. Now, how did I quickly switch this to grayscale and back? That's what I wanna show you in this video. So in order to do that, if we go to view, page, uh, or I'm sorry, proof setup, and we go to custom. With this panel open, you want to make sure that under device to simulate, that you choose working gray. More than likely, it's probably set to working CMYK, which is great, but working gray is much more useful when you're digitally coloring. So that's what I have my set to. I can click OK. And now there's a corresponding keyboard shortcut that works with that. If I hit Command Y, I can toggle between grayscale and color very easily. This allows me to check my colors to see if they resolve to values that have differentiation. Uh, it may not be so obvious to represent. Let me give you another example of this by just picking a color. Let's say that I pick this shade of red. And now let's say that I make another copy, but instead of that red, I'll pick blue. Well, those look like totally different colors. Let's see what they map to in grayscale. They look very close to one another. In fact, you could almost make mistake one color for the other one. This is what I mean by being able to check your values because red and blue look fine if you have the ability to see those colors, but someone who is par partially or fully colorblind that can't differentiate red from blue will just think of it as one color. And that could impede their ability to understand what you're trying to communicate visually. So one way we can fix this is we can adjust the lightness of this blue. When we do that, or we could make the red darker, right? Now we can see that there's a difference in value. So the grayscale test is something that we'll continue to talk about as we start approaching more advanced coloring techniques, but I wanted you to be aware of it now when we're dealing with color flat so that you can put this into practice right away. That's all I have for this video. I'll see you in the next one.